Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angie from Burton Avenue and I want to show you how to make amazing things with your Cricut. Welcome to day 19 of my 25 Days of Craftsmas series, where I show you how to make 25 different Christmas projects using your Cricut. And I also share the SVG files I use to make the projects for free, so you can make them too. Today, I'm showing you how to make this Christmas centerpiece box. Didn't it turn out pretty? I'm so excited to put it on my table this Christmas season. So let's go take a look at the supply list and get started. For this project, you'll need wood for your box, wood glue, a nail gun or hammer and nails, vinyl for your stencil, a scorch marker, a high heat gun, stain, Christmas embellishments, a weeding tool and scraper, transfer tape, your Cricut machine, a cutting mat, and the cut file. So grab your supplies and head over to your computer. The first thing we need to do is grab the SVG file we'll be using for this project. You can get it for free on my blog at BurtonAvenue.com. I keep all the SVG files for the projects I make and share in this free SVG library. These files will work with all kinds of cutting machines and they're free to everyone. Once you're on my site, just go ahead and click on Free SVG Files and then Free SVG Library. You will need a password to get into the library and there are instructions on the screen if you need to get one. Once you're in the library, you can search for the file Mary. It will either be listed under the most recent projects and cut files or under the category Craftmas 2020 Day 19. You can also use your browser search to find it. Once you've found the file, go ahead and click on it and it will be downloaded onto your computer. Now when you download these files online, they usually come in a zipped folder and you'll need to extract them before you can use them in Cricut Design Space. To do this, you'll want to go to the location where your downloaded files are saved on your computer. Then you need to find that folder that we just downloaded and double click on it. A new window will open and somewhere you should see the option to extract all. Click on that and another window will open. And this will show you the destination where the unzipped files will be saved onto your computer. You need to remember this location because you'll have to get to it once you're in Cricut Design Space. So go ahead and click on the extract button and those files will be unzipped and they're now ready to use. So let's head over to Design Space and start a new project. Once you're on the canvas screen, go ahead and click on the upload button and then click upload image and then choose browse. Now you'll want to go to the location where those unzipped files were saved. Find the folder and double click on it. And inside of that folder, you'll see several different file types listed. And we are going to be using the SVG file. And sometimes your computer might display the SVG as a Chrome HTML document or something similar to that. So if you don't see SVG in the list of files, be sure to look for something like that. So go ahead and select the SVG file and then click open. Make sure it's the file that you want to work with and then click save. And then choose that file one more time and click insert images. And now the design will appear on our canvas screen. So the first thing that we're going to do is resize it so that it fits nicely on our centerpiece. So I'm going to go up and change the width to 17 inches and I'll leave the height proportional. Now that the design is sized correctly, we need to turn it into a stencil. And we can do that by drawing a rectangle around it. So go over and click on Shapes, and then choose Square. And I am going to change the size of this square to the same dimensions as the piece of wood that we'll be putting this stencil on. So I'm going to unlock the padlock and then I'll change the width to 20 and the height to five and a half inches. So now this rectangle is the same size as our piece of wood. So let's bring the design in front of the rectangle by selecting it 
and clicking Arrange and Send to Front. Now we can just see what we're working with. Okay, now we are going to position these letters on the rectangle the way that we want them to appear on our box. So I'm just gonna move it over to the right and just leave a little bit of space on the right. And then I'm going to select both the rectangle and the design and go up to Align and click on Center Vertically. And that will just center the design from top to bottom. Okay, the last thing that we need to do is right click and choose Attach. And that will just lock our design into place on the rectangle. And that's it. Now we can go cut this design on our machine. So go click on the green Make It button. And since this is a large design, Cricut Design Space is just letting us know that we need to use a larger cutting map. So click on OK. And then you'll see over here that we need to use a 12 inch by 24 inch map. So go ahead and click on Continue. And once Design Space finds your Cricut, you'll be taken to this screen. Be sure that your dial is set to vinyl and then you can go load your mat. So place a piece of large vinyl on your cutting mat and smooth it out so there aren't any wrinkles or bubbles. Then load it into your Cricut by pressing the up and down arrow button. When your machine is ready to cut, the C button will light up. Press that and the machine will begin cutting. Once everything is cut, you can press the up and down arrow button again to remove the mat. Remove your piece of vinyl from the cutting mat and cut off any unused area of the vinyl. Then weed away the excess vinyl. You can use a weeding tool to help you pull out the letters from inside of the rectangle. Once everything is weeded, we need to apply some transfer tape. So cut a piece that's a little bit bigger than your design and place it sticky side up on your work surface. Then place the vinyl lettering on top of that and smooth it down. Then trim off the excess transfer tape and vinyl backing and rub over the design with your scraper. Now flip the design over and carefully pull off the vinyl backing. Position the design on the piece of wood that you'll be stenciling. Match the straight edges of the stencil with the straight edges of the wood. And then rub over the design again with your scraper. Now you can pull off the transfer tape. The next thing we're going to do is trace over the design with a scorch marker. The fluid inside the marker is tinted just a little bit, so you should be able to see where you have traced. After you're finished tracing the entire design, you can pull off the vinyl stencil. Now for the fun part. Grab your heat gun and start heating up the design. Like magic, the design will start to turn dark but try not to hold the heat gun in one place for too long or it can burn the wood around the stencil design. You can go back and heat up any areas that need to be darker. This box is really easy to make because it's all straight cuts. You'll need the following pieces of wood. Two five and a half inch by five and a half inch pieces for the sides, two 20 inch by five and a half inch pieces for the front and back, and one 18 and a half inch by five and a half inch piece for the bottom. Add some wood glue along the bottom of one of the side pieces. Then use a nailer or hammer and nails to secure the side piece to the bottom of the box. Repeat this with the other side. Now add some wood glue to the bottom and sides of the box and place the front piece on top of that and nail into place and do the same steps with the back piece. Now we are going to stain our box. I used weather oak. You don't have to use this color, but you do need to use something light so it doesn't cover up the design. So brush on your stain and then use a rag or paper towel to wipe off the excess. Once the stain has had plenty of time to dry, it's time to fill up the box. There are lots of different options you could add in this box. 
You could do candles, mini Christmas trees, or even fresh greenery. I picked up some little floral picks and ornaments from the Dollar Tree to fill up mine. Thanks for joining me on another day of my 25 Days of Craftmas series. If you love this project and want to see more like it, be sure to like and subscribe so you'll get notified each time I post a new video. See ya!